Good morning, everybody. Nick here. It is 10.48 on this Wednesday, January 26th. It looks nice out there today, but certainly it doesn't feel nice out there today. The thermometer says 22, but the feel light temp feels like 2. It is Wednesday, meaning it's a worship day. A couple of announcements before we begin. It is looking more and more likely that that new trade series I was telling you about, that I've been telling you about, will begin February 5th. Now, it'll be a little different than, than usual. It'll actually start in Old Saybrook. And it will go to the terminal passing through New Haven. It's going to start in Shoreline East and Metro North going down. And then coming back, it'll be Amtrak. And if we sit in the cafe car, filming would be a hell of a lot easier. Also... Lunch with Pastor Tom will resume in a couple of weeks. So that's exciting. Where I will get more insight and tips for, the, for this broadcast. Also, we'll be talking about doing a Monday-Thursday service side-by-side. -side where, where you'll see this broadcast here at home. But also you will see that broadcast from the Baptist Church as well. And speaking of that time of year, we will be working through this Cantata Testimony of Life beginning on March 23rd. So, after I go for my exam on what they're going to do about my teeth, we will begin this service, Testimony of Life, March 23rd, and it will go through Easter Sunday, which is April 17th. An update from Rhode Island seems to be coming along, but we have decided at, at this point probably to close the book on the Josh story for now. The reason why is because we don't feel like we don't want to wait for him any longer. But working down the Rhode Island coast, somebody named Mike will be coming up here to visit on Friday night before whatever is coming through here on Saturday. Now, I am not a meteorologist, but I was looking at the GC, G, GFS model. And it looks like it can looks like the track is it will continue to move away from Connecticut. So, so that is definitely good news there. So, so we hope that it will just continue to the track will just continue to keep moving away from us. There would be an impact, but the impact would not be as severe as if it were a direct shot. Are there any other announcements that need to be made before we begin? Yes, I was going to just mention that. As usual, if you would like to donate to this channel and help me get equipment for better con better quality, you may visit my Patreon page and you can donate to this channel. Also, I have made a new Facebook page since mine was hacked last week. So if you go to the brand info and click my name, you will find a link to my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So we come before him this afternoon, this morning, in this time of epiphany. 
where we are, where there are things that we can look forward to, and we also can put aside our troubles. Just put aside everything that is on our minds and, you know, the people that may rub us the wrong way. So today I invite you to just put it all away in this hour of prayer. With the opening hymn number three, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning knowing that you are merciful and mighty. That you are the blessed Trinity. You're in three persons. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So in this hour of prayer, lead us with a heart, mind, and spirit to worship you and to know that you are merciful, you are mighty. That you are with us every day. And our son shall rise to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
steadfast love. seated. So the anthem today is So Be It.
What a beautiful anthem. Thank you, Heather Sorensen and Hal Leonard. And it is true. So be it. It is what it's going to be. So we come to the place of prayer this morning. There's another one of his gifts where we can bring our lives and the lives of others that we know. Of course, we want to think about Wilbur, the Barnaby family, and we hope that things will go as planned on Friday as we begin this next chapter in this transition, I guess. And as usual, I will give you opportunity to lift up those that you know. So the prayer side today is 2108, Oh How He Loves You and Me. this morning we come before you recognizing the fact that in life like the anthem said so be it some things never change like the sun comes out in the daytime but it's dark at night we can't change the weather pattern to make it always feel like summer we live in a region where, you know, they might say, oh, we'll get a dozen inches of snow. Well, you might just get just three or four. And with you, it's the same way. We are all the same to you. We are your children. And your steadfast love never ceases. It's new every morning. By the time when we get up in the morning to the time we go to bed, you are with us every step of the way throughout the day. And your faithfulness to us is, is comforting and encouraging. But sometimes in our lives, we, we run into people that may not be all they, all they may make us think they are. Maybe it's somebody that we were with for 15 months. And they run away from home. They run away from us. Maybe it's somebody that has mental issues and is on too many medications to, so he can even think properly and function. Maybe it's a doctor that overprescribes and is facing legal trouble. And in this world that we live in, it's a very stuck up world where everybody's in their own world. The new phrase is, see something, say nothing. What kind of world is this? This is not the world that you created. 
And it's certainly not how we want to live our lives. But a little closer to 11, and we pray for the following. Lord has always continued to be with Wilbur as he looks like he continues to make a full recovery from the from the horrors of early December. As always, keep that tumor away from him, erase it, remove it, and give this little guy a little, a little more hope as we go through 2022. We would pray for the Barbie family and hope that one day we might get the answers that we want. And understand why the events that occurred back on October 1st happened. But we know that that may not be possible. And we also know that it, that it would not do us any favors by, you know, flying to where Charlie is right now. Because we knew we would not be welcomed. It would not be worth the time and effort. We pray for the Rotella family and hope that Josh continues his recovery and the path that he's on. We pray that on fr Friday this new friend Mike comes and begins something new and clean with him. We pray for mom that her back spasms and her back problems come to a halt. And we pray for grandma that she would... Uh, she would know when the sometimes just keep her mouth shut. We thank you for our pets, of course. We think of Wilbur, Lenny, Willow, and Milo, and all Boston Terriers out there who give us more love than some humans do. And for those of you at home, we pause. And give you the chance to lift up whoever is on your mind. And while you do that, we will take a break. And so it's to that end. You love us. You gave your life for us. So as we walk through these days... Hoping that this pandemic will become an endemic sooner rather than later. And we would pray that that new Elantra would come like a gift from you. As it is in that prayer that you taught us, say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Jesus to Calvary did go, did go. His love for sinners to show. So in negativity comes positivity, and that positivity is the gift that he provides for us in our lives. Whether it's a bad scene, a new car, a new relationship, and a new hope. So as always, I invite you to please subscribe to this channel, and please check out some of my other videos that, that I made as well. Earlier this week, I made, I made the look back at the Patriots season and the MLB lockout update. It appears that they are close to an agreement. So that so this season will begin on time 
and and we all love our days at Femway. And we all love our days at Dodd, too. So with that in mind, please subscribe to this channel, like this video, and leave your comments. Always looking for feedback on these videos. And you know, even tell me that you tell me that you like me telling you these stories that relate to what we are working through today. So the offertory today is Another one by Sam Smith. And will the ushers please come forward as we receive the afternoon, excuse me, the morning's gift and offering. Sorry, used to doing this in the afternoon. Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy <coughs> Ghost. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen Amen Lord, it's true that sometimes in life we find another person to be with. But as the song says, it's a warning not to be ignored. And that's the same with you. You guide us in our lives. We lay our life before you. So take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world. As we look to end this pandemic, get a new car, and have a bright and happy 2022. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. Okay. So just as a side note, you're probably wondering why I chose that operatory for today. Well, because he sent a very clear message in that song. And it's, a, and it's a warning not to be ignored, which is something that we are going to look at in the message today. So I invite you to please, in your pew Bible, Romans chapter 12. We are kind of reviewing the setting things right process today. Romans chapter 12. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for Him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, Fix your attention to God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to the level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develop well-formed maturity in you. I speak it to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me, especially as I have responsibilities in relation to you. Living then, as every one of you does, in pure grace, it's important that you not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us, not by what we are and what we do for him. And now to a little bit earlier where he talks about the setting things right. So Romans chapter 3, sorry with verse 21. But in our time, something new has been added. What Moses and the prophets witnessed to all those years has happened. The God setting things right that we read about has become Jesus setting things right for us. And not only for us, but for everyone who believes in him. For there is no difference between us and them in this. Since we've compiled this long and sorry record of sinners, both us and them, and prove that we are utterly incapable of living the glorious lives God wills for us. God did it for us. Out of sheer generosity, he put us in the right standard with himself. A pure gift. He got us out of the mess we're in and restored us to where he always wanted us to be. And he did it by the means of Jesus Christ. 
God sacrificed Jesus on the altar of the world to clear that world of sin. Having faith in him sets us in the clear. God decided on this course of action and feel, excuse me, in full view of the public to set the world of the clear, excuse me, in the clear with himself through the sacrifice of Jesus. Finally, taking care of the sins he had so patiently endured. This is not only clear, but it's now. This is current history. God sets things right. He also makes it possible for us to live in his rightness. So where does it leave our proud Jewish insider claims and counterclaim? Cancelled? Yes. Cancelled. What we've learned is, is this. God does not respond to what we do. We respond to what God does. We finally figured it out. Our lives get in step with God and all others by letting him set the pace. Not by proudly or anxiously, anxiously trying to run the parade. And where does that leave our proud Jewish claims of having a corner on God? Also canceled. God is the God of outsider non-Jews as well as insider Jews. How could it be otherwise since there is only one God? God sets right all who welcome his actions and enter it, into it. But those who follow our religious system and those who have never heard of our religion. Okay, so we, for review purposes, what does set of things right mean? To begin, let's review the definition of set of things right. Set of things right means that you look at a situation with somebody and you try to correct it in whatever way you can. Like, maybe at a job. Maybe you talked about something with your coworker that, you know, you didn't think would make them uncomfortable and you were just trying to make conversation with them. And then you get a call from HR saying that you have been terminated. And then you ask yourself, why? So you go and you ask HR. You ask them. You ask them. What did I do? Why did I get terminated? And they say to you, well, two reasons. One, there isn't enough routes in Lebanon. And number two, it's the social interaction you had with the drivers that made them uncomfortable. And that's really where that's really where that has always been a struggle for me. Knowing the time and place to talk about these things. Because think about it. UPS came right after the horrors that happened with Charlie a month earlier. So physically, yes, we were ready to to do that, knowing that it would it would be the next step in getting that new Elantra. But looking back on it now, mentally, we were not ready for it. And that is and, and you know that is what we have come to identify now, two months later. And it's like we recognize the fact that our performance and our conduct went hand in hand. Our performance was good. Okay. It had nothing to do with how we did on a day-to-day -day basis. For the four days that I was actually doing the job. But that's another story. But it's the social interaction that got us into that situation. So how do you set it right? Later on this year, when that opportunity comes again, call them and ask them. And say to them, look, I understand where I went wrong. And I want to set it right with you guys and proving, my, proving myself, proving to you and myself that I can do this job and not and you guys don't have to worry about, you know, 
me saying the wrong thing or, you know, doing something that would be inappropriate. Now, pause right there. Here's the other, here's, here's a newsflash for you about this job. So, when you're talking about your previous, when you're talking about the situation that you were in, you get fired. But why is it okay for the drivers to say that they had a good time with their missus the night before? Why? Why is that okay? But me talking about what happened with Charlie isn't. You know, I wanted to ask them that. But they didn't. I thought about it. But why is that okay? You know, this is what he's saying is our immaturity. There were parts of us where we are still immature. And we want to revert back to a younger version, to a version of ourselves that we were. But that's not how life is, is it? We can't turn back the clock. We can't go back and rewind what happened back in October. We can't. We physically cannot turn back the clock. What we can do is we have to identify where things may have rose eyebrows. And what do I mean by that? I mean, you know, with our interactions with people, no matter who they are, it could be mom and dad, it could be grandma, it could be Mike, this new guy that's coming to visit on Friday, before whatever is coming through here. We have to understand the fact that, that, that there are boundaries that need, to, that need to be set. We have to set expectations for ourselves. Just like we have to set expectations for other people. Reasonable expectations. Now, it wasn't like I was going to go sleep with the driver. No, that is not, that is not what was going to happen. I was just talking to them and asking them. I asked them, well, what do you think of, like, oh, what do you think caused this? Asking their opinion. But being the new guy, a lot of places are not really gay friendly. And that's what I think was the case here. Now, obviously, we got our W-2 today. And obviously, we're going to let my accountant, my mom, do that for us. And you know, it... And then we have... Okay, so that's one situation that can be set right pretty easily, it seems. Because they did say we would be welcomed back. Because they had, otherwise they had no problem with me whatsoever. There are two other situations I'm going to talk about about in this message today one being let's go back a few years ago now I have been going to the Baptist Church in Lebanon since I was 12 but as I got older you know I was living in Niantic at the time and I wasn't around as much when I came back home completely I wanted to to join the choir. Well, little did I know that joining the choir came at a cost.
You sing, you sing one note off, you're done. But that's not the part of this story that I'm going to tell you about. I want to talk about the, you know, you, when you have a traditional worship service, you have the service and then you have fellowship hour. Well, I felt like I, I felt like Pastor would, Tom would be ignoring me. You know, it's like. You know, you would look around, and he would make time to talk to everybody else except me. Finally, I'd had enough, and I laid into him, and I told him, "Look." I told him. Look, you have you have time to talk to everybody else, but you can't talk to me, really. Oh yeah, I was a little I was peed off with them. He's like, oh, I had to go to meetings. I had to do this. I had to do that. It's like. It's like, I know you. I know you have certain things that you have to do before you go home. I understand that. But what I don't understand is why is it you can talk to other people, but yet, if I want to talk to you, that cannot happen. So we felt left out. And we felt ignored. Like our needs were not being met by him. Finally, I came up with a solution. I told him, you know, if I can't talk to you on Sunday, then, you know, why not just maybe go to lunch on, one of the, on Sunday that you are up here? And that worked out. Now, I do talk to him almost on a weekly basis, you know, working through these things, and obviously he watches this service. By the way, Pastor, I am not, I'm just telling the story. So that's another situation where I had to set it right. And the last situation that I'm going to talk about today is, you know, maneuvering through dealing with my grandmother. Now, grandma can be described in one word. Kooky. You know, throughout this process of getting that new Elantra, I have been allowed to use her car at her at her convenience. So, with her permission, the problem is she has decided to bring people up from the past. It's like, okay, I don't care if you talk to them. But when you're trying to bring them back into the picture, when somebody did wrong, what Charlie did was totally socially and morally unacceptable. That clearly shows the immaturity that he has. He was not man enough to come up here or let me go down to West Haven and figure out what the hell was going on. And that hurts. It still hurts. To this day. It still hurts. So why are you bringing up a hot topic? I'll tell you why. Because that's how she is. You take her into Walmart, she'll talk about mom's, you know, undergarment size. 
She'll talk about flapping her stuff when she was at the post office many years ago. Seriously, what the hell is going on here? You let me use your car, but at what cost? At what cost? I've even told her, you know, I wouldn't mind giving, uh, you know, a few bucks for the insurance or to put my name on her car. Isn't that, you know, I want to know. So here's the question for the viewers at home. Don't you think that it was a rational idea? Any person would tell you. It seemed like a rational idea. You know. And so I told her. Look. If you. If, I told her. If you're going to continue. To talk about people. From the past. That's on you. I don't want to hear it. This is standing up for myself and recognizing the fact that she's doing this to hurt us. It's not helping us. If those people wanted to, wanted to come back in the picture and set it right, they know how to get a hold of me. They don't need to go through her. And we will continue to work through the seven things right leading up to Lent. Amen. So the closing hymn today is All to Jesus I surrender. Five ninety cents. Jesus, I surrender all to Him, I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live. I surrender. Yeah.
at his feet I bow, worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me Jesus, take me now, I surrender all, I surrender Savior, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender, Lord. I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy love and power. Let Thy blessing fall on me. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Receive the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he help you navigate the curveballs of life. And help you set things right in, in whatever situation. So thank you for watching this video. And we will end... The core of that itch is all things through Christ. So thank you for watching.